YouTube, YouTube. What's going on? Trey back again to hit you with a video. Now, this video right here comes out of California. Big shout out to all my peeps in California. Sorry I had to uh, jump ship and get the hell up out of Cali. But anyway, everything's all good. Be back to visit you all sometimes. But yes, I had to go. I had to go. I had to go. We have a very strange story, a unique story. And I'm glad that this story thus far has a happy ending, even though it took 20 years for this happy ending to come. At least it comes because some people died in prison innocent. And also, I want to send a big shout out to the California Innocent Project, CIP, for basically taking on these guys' cases that nobody else would want to hear, that pretty much the court system done already ran through the damn system, and it's hard for these guys to get back in court. And this group of people, you know what I'm saying, I think it's a non-profit organization, they get together and they try to resolve guys' cases, those guys who they feel are uh, innocent and also have overwhelming proof that they are innocent just like in this case right here where we have a man who was convicted of killing his co-worker when it come to find out the him and the co-worker was having an affair but the co-worker that he was cheating with was married now her husband set the whole murder up and had his nephew to basically go kill his wife and that came out later on when the uh dna from her fingernails came back and it showed that it was somebody that was related to the husband and that's how the nephew ended up getting charged and also the nephew was already charged with messing with a child anyway some uh corner knowledge of a juvenile charge so he already has a very bad criminal past anyway but it goes to show you what's done in the dark will always come in the light let me say that one more time what's done in the dark will always come to the light and it's very good that we have uh people groups organizations like the california innocent project that basically put themselves on the line, you know what I'm saying, their reputations, and sometimes their livelihood, because some of these people, you have people don't want to see these people free, and you know, you have crazy people out here, so they might try to target these people, these lawyers or whatnot, that's trying to help these guys get free, and they should be free, because you sh nobody should be locked up, man or woman, if they did not do anything to warrant that or deserve that, so it's a good story, it's a good happy ending, and like they say, the truth will always come out into the light. I'm going to read a snippet from this story, and I'm going to get my opinion. Surely, as we go, an affair led to his conviction in a co-worker's murder. Now, he is free and the victim's husband has been arrested. That's karma for you right there, even though he was wrong for messing with this man's wife. But still, though, you shouldn't go to prison just because you mess with somebody's wife. If anything, we can just square up or we can talk about it or we can fight, whatever you want to do. But don't sit up here and set somebody up for murder. And then also... He ended up setting his own wife up for the murder and had this guy basically thrown in jail. And, and the lead thing that they caught him, I mean, well, how they found out that uh, they linked him to the crime was a watch. You know, he had a certain kind of watch and he did not deny that he wore that type of watch. And they pretty much railroaded him on that. And that's when the California Innocent Project stepped in. And that's why I said it's a miracle, even though it took a long time, you know, but it still happened. That's why you can't lose faith even in the darkest hours, even when it feels like there's nobody there. You have to keep your faith. You feel me? That's all you really have is your hope and your faith. Once you lose that, you lose everything. Now, when authorities found the body of Terry Cheeks on rocks near Corona Lakes shoreline two decades ago, they also found a watch because they're going to go by evidence whatsoever around the crime scene. That timepiece found next to the strangled body of the married mother of two had two children. Belonged to Horace Roberts, a co-worker with whom she was having a secret affair with. Riverside County prosecutors insisted. So evidently, the husband had to know, set the whole thing up, and there you go. What is more compelling than Horace Roberts' watch that's found next to the murder woman's body? There's nothing more compelling than that. Prosecutors told jurors at Roberts' July 1999 trial. Now imagine if you sitting there in... For those of you who went to court, they use evidence like that. That's, that's, that's part of them building a case. And you knowing that you're innocent, but you here you is. You got this man that you don't even know, don't even know nothing about. You don't even care. Just trying to get another victory under his belt and stuff so he can have a good record and stuff in case he try to run for judge or whatnot. That's what these lawyers be doing. Or if he trying to run for uh, mayor or whatever, you never know. They have political aspirations. That's why a lot of them be doing that. But they, they start off, you know, regular law, you know, unless they go to college, district attorneys or whatnot, DA didn't move up to judges or whatnot. So you have a guy here basically telling the jury that there is no shadow of a doubt that 
this guy Roberts killed this woman because the watch was right here. And come to find out, they did not just start making one watch like how he had, just like they didn't start making just one damn Toyota Corolla or one damn Honda Accord. They make countless of them. You feel me? So for this, for them to use that little argument, it's asinine and shows that they really just want a damn conviction, especially in the state of California. After three trials, three trials, now they're trying their best to get this man. Roberts was convicted in Cheek's murder based mostly on the lowest watch that was found next to her body, a type of watch Roberts acknowledged owning. He did not lie and say that he didn't own the watch. He just a damn watch. It's like I own a lot of different watches. Hell, I, I, I like watches. I like hats. Of course, you feel me? But that don't mean that I'm the one killed this person. You feel me? But DNA testing in March forced the California Innocent Project revealed that DNA from Cheek's fingernails did not belong to Roberts, but rather to someone related to her husband because the close similarities of the DNA that came out. So they pretty much knew there was somebody related to her husband, but who? Two weeks ago, Roberts was secretly freed from prison after both the Riverside County District Attorney and the California Innocent Project agreed that he was wrongly convicted and that two other men are responsible for Cheek's death in April of 1998. But the sad thing about that, this man done spent two decades, 20 years in prison. You cannot give that man back those days of his life. One day is too long to spend in prison, in jail for something you didn't do. One minute is too long to spend in an incarceration for something you do you didn't do. One second is too damn long. So for 20 years, you know, no amount of money. A lot of y'all might be saying, well, he will get a lot of money. Keep the damn money. Give me back my 20 years because time is the most valuable thing you have on this earth. Not money, not some paper fiat money that's that's worthless. You feel me? You know, it's just a thought that we put behind the money. So for those who say, well, he's going to get a paycheck, damn the paycheck. You know what I'm saying? This man's life done just totally flew by even though he's still kind of young. You know, he's not just old and can't get around. But the point is, 20 years is a long time. You go lock yourself in a room for 20 years and see how you feel. Now, the new suspects, Cheek's husband, Googie Harris Sr., sound like somebody who's down to do a Google search and to see how the proper way to kill somebody. And his nephew, why do these people always get their family members involved? And if you go get your family members involved for your wife cheating on you with, with another man, you must don't give a damn about your family because why would you get your family involved, your nephew? Your nephew ain't married to this woman. Your nephew had nothing to do with this, but he was stupid enough to ride along with it. Now, his nephew, Jaquan Leo the third were arrested Friday on suspicion of murder. Now he's going to face a whole murder charge, possibly gonna get life in prison, all because his damn uncle, wife cheating, and he wasn't man enough to kill him himself or leave the woman, so he had him to do it. Riverside County District Attorney Michael Hestron announced the arrest Monday, as well as the collaboration between the California Innocent Project that led prosecutors to dismiss. Robert's conviction, which they should have rightfully did so. The man is innocent. Let the man go. And this and this should show us that, you know, you do have quite a few people that are innocent in jail. And they tell you, well, you wouldn't be in jail if you was if you weren't guilty. You wouldn't be in prison if you weren't guilty. That's true in a lot of sense, but at the same time, different strokes for different case. I mean, different strokes for different folks, I mean. And also, just because people put the stigma on people in jail and prison does not mean everybody there committed a crime to get there. Some people were actually lied on. Some people were set up. Some people, you know, didn't have a clue what was going on. You know, they probably came home, found somebody dead, next thing you know, they done did 10, 15 years, 20 years, and some of them don't even get out. Or some of them go to prison, then catch other charges. Like if a guy trying to take your manhood or something like that, you feel me? You're going you gonna to do what you got to do. The next thing you know, you got a charge for that. So just because you go to prison for 20 years or 10 years does not mean that you're going to do 10, 20 years because you get in there, you get in all kinds of shit. Then they flatten you out. And if you don't know what flatten out mean, uh, I'm not talking about dead, but, but it's kind of like you're dead. No, they just flatten you out. You got a, you got uh, you got five years. Guess what? You're going to do five years. You ain't going to get out on no, on no one third or one half, no 85 percent. No, they're going to flatten your ass out day for day. What happened to Mr. Roberts is tragic. Hestron said, we as prosecutors always try to be vigilant and follow the truth. Once I learned of the new DNA findings, I immediately directed that all charges be dismissed. And that's a good thing that you did, Mr. Hester. Mr. Roberts has my commitment that we will aggressively apply new technologies to past, present, and future prosecutions. And I commit to him the resources of our victim service division to help him in rebuilding his life. And it's good to have some kind of uh, service, some kind of business where they can help these guys re-enter re society like a re-entry program if you will where they can get back into society and you know 
kind of like pick up the pieces, even though you would never be able to pick up all the pieces, but you can kind of like piece your life together a little bit at a time, even though it would not be the same. But it's better than nothing. It's better than not having nothing. Them just releasing you say, just go. At least you can have some kind of plan. The district attorney Monday asked a judge to find robbers factually innocent in Cheek's murder, scrubbing his entire criminal history connected to the death from the records. Leo and Harris, he said, have been charging Cheek's killing in hell in lieu of a $1 million bond. 20 years, this, this ex-husband and his nephew sat back laughing at this man saying how stupid of a fool he was, and yes, he was stupid for sleeping with a married man's wife. I'm not I'm not disputing that. I'm not saying that he is uh, good for that. He is wrong for that. True enough. You know what I'm saying? Because you desecrate the marriage. I understand that. But yet and still, though, it still does not warrant, and it's still not sufficient for this man to go do 20 damn years just because your wife wanted to have sex with him. The day he was released, robbers enjoyed a simple pleasure. This is what I love. This is what I miss more than anything. And guess what he said? My freedom. Your freedom means a lot to you, but you don't realize how much it means to you till it gets taken away. The 60-year-old said after sipping a bottle of Pepsi in the back of his lawyer's car, he get in a new pair of clothes. He then flew to the East Coast where relatives greeted him with hugs and tears. A very emotional moment when he walked in there. Some of these people he probably ain't seen in 20 years or 10 years when the last time they came and visit, if they came and visit, because he's on one side of the country and they're on the other side of the country. You And, and some of y'all are like, well, that's not far. Well, you all got people in your same city and your state that's locked up in your family. You ain't went and seen them or wrote them a letter. So yes, it is kind of far. Justin Brooks, the founder of the California Innocent Project, said that Cheek's husband had set up robbers. It's the oldest story there is in the murder business. Husband kills wife who is cheating on him. The twist in this case is that the husband set up the lover to go to prison for the rest of his life. And that's a sad situation. Now, Cheek's vanished the night of April the 13th, 1998. She never arrived at her late night shift at Quest Diagnostics, where she worked with Roberts. Four days later, her string of body was found along the highway near the croggy shore of Corona Lake, halfway between Corona and Lake Elsinore. The last people to see her alive were said to be her two daughters and her husband. Suspicion quickly turned to Roberts, who colleagues at the medical comply, uh, company suspected was having an affair with Cheeks. Roberts lied to Riverside County Sheriff's the deputies when questioned about the liation. Like, he's not messing with this woman. Of course the man is going to lie. You know what I'm saying? Like, who wouldn't? You wouldn't want nobody in your business if you're sleeping with somebody's wife. But that don't mean he still killed them. You know, it's not right for him to lie to so-called law enforcement. But at the same time, I mean, come on. Roberts, who also lied to his co-workers about the affair, did so out of shame and embarrassment, his lawyer said. But detectives hunted for a killer saw it as an effort to cover up his role in a brutal slaying. During three trials, two of which ended in a hung jury, prosecutors would show jurors robbers in consistent statements, characterizing them as lies designed to cover up a murder. They pointed out the presence of his truck near the crime scene in a purse in his possession that one of Chief's daughters swore her mother had left with the night she disappeared. But more than any other evidence, the watch found next to Cheek's body would lead to Robert's conviction. He was sentenced to 15 years to life for second degree murder. Now he did 20. They was going to probably going to give him life period. But for him to be uh, 15 to life, which me after 15 years, he can come up for parole, which they're going to keep denying any damn way, especially in the state of California. From his prison cell, Roberts reached out to the California Innocent Project. Over the next decade, lawyers saw DNA testing from Cheek's fingernail scrapings, the rope that was used to strangle her and a watch found next to her body. Now, if he would have went to prison and didn't contact these people, guess what? He would still be in prison right now. That's why I tell you, you have to keep fighting. If you don't take nothing else from the story, when you know that you not guilty, when you know that you're right and you're innocent, man, fight to the death. Fight to the death because trust me, they would have gave him death and he would have just been another dead person that died in prison. That's it. Even when you're back against the wall and it seems like there's no hope left, Remember the uh, Reuben Carter, the hurricane story, how he got in there and he was an innocent man. He followed, he followed, he followed. It took a while, but guess what? He got out because guess what they also say? A closed mouth don't get fed. And I'm not talking about food in this way, but we talking about the food is freedom. That's what you want. So you got to open your mouth. You got to shout until they hear you. And if they don't hear you, keep shout. Trust me, somebody will hear you. Now, the organization's legal team in 2013 filed a petition for a writ of habeas corpus on behalf of Roberts. Michael Semanchik, managing attorney for the California Innocent Project, said that the watch had the DNA of Harris' son on it and clearly was not Robert's watch. End of the story right there. 
went and got a watch just like this man, just so they can tie him to that. But they forgot one little thing, DNA evidence. As you sweat and you might have a little hair on your arm like some people do or whatnot, you might have a little saliva dropping or whatever, you'll be amazed what they can pull DNA from. Let me know what you all think about this story. And also, if you going through infidelity with your spouses, the last thing you should do or think about is wanting to kill them. Even though you, you, you get mad and you might cross your mind, don't do it. Don't do it. Let their ass go. And damn sure, don't go sit somebody else up to take the fall you know if she, if he or she is messing with somebody and you're married to this person that cheating on you don't go trying to set that person up if you're not going to do it yourself which you shouldn't don't go get your family members involved your niece, your nephews and nieces talking about go kill him or her just leave the shit alone and if you're going to do it you do it your damn self that's what i would have said the nephew would have had nothing to do with this that's sad anyway let's show you how family would do you his own uncle set him up to go down for the kill too with something that even involved him because that was his wife, not the nephew wife. Anyway, big shout out once again to the California Innocent Project for putting their uh, reputation, their livelihoods on the line. Because you got to understand, a lot of these people don't want these guys, some of these guys free. It's not saying they didn't want robbers free, but it's a lot of other stories. If you go back and look, some of these cases are, are really very controversial and they don't want most of these guys released. So big shout out to them also for trying to help people that's voiceless and that need help. You know, that means a lot to me. If you like the video, push that like button. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely share the video with your family and friends. And also, just remember, if you're innocent and you're not guilty, fight to the death. Fight to the end. Because if this guy would have went in that prison cell and hushed up and went to fall back and just gave up, like, I'm here, what can I do? He would still be there right now. That's why you got to keep fighting to the end. As long as you got breath in your body, you have the chance. I'm out.